Now, Sports Extra with Andrew Chernoff. Hello and welcome into the Sunday Sports Extra. I'm Andrew Chernoff. We have another very busy show for you tonight. West Jordan Stark and Newton are our only two teams still alive in the high school football playoffs. We'll hear from both coaches in a bit. Plus, we revisit last night's thrilling Ozean and Central Boys basketball game. First, though, we begin in the NFL. The playoffs still a possibility for the Houston Texans. Sure, they need some help to get a wild card spot, but they cannot worry about those scenarios. They have to take care of business on their end first. The Houston Texans on the road today, taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. First quarter, the home team strikes first. Blake Bortles running to his right, still running. He finds Alan Hearns in the end zone for the touchdown. Come on, Houston. You cannot lose to Jacksonville. Houston does not panic. Second quarter, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the speed demon, the rushing touchdown. Houston up 10-7. Third quarter, H-Town trailing again. Alfred Blue punches it in from a yard out. Texans retake the lead, 17-13. They pull away in the fourth. Arian Foster not going to be denied on fourth down. He scores. Houston wins today 27-13. The Texans now 7-6 on the year. Another NFL Sunday means another chance for you to win our Cowboy Text Down Contest. Each week throughout the NFL season, be sure to watch the NFL on both KFDM and Fox 4 to learn the code word. One winner selected each week, and at the end of the season, one of those winners has a chance to win a new Chevy truck, courtesy of Cowboy in Silsby. The code word this week, savings. You have until midnight tonight to text that word to 67336 on your phones. The pros, not the only football people are talking about today. That's because the college football playoff rankings were also released. And the first playoff in college football history will feature Alabama, Oregon, Florida State, and Ohio State. Two of the teams left out of it, Baylor and TCU. Remember, TCU was third in last week's rankings, but a dominant performance by the Buckeyes in the Big Ten Championship propelled them to a spot in the playoffs. So, where will Baylor and TCU now play? Baylor will play Michigan State in the Cotton Bowl January 1st. Meanwhile, TCU is in the Peach Bowl against Ole Miss on New Year's Eve. Other notable games, Houston takes on Pitt January 2nd in the Armed Forces Bowl. The Music City Bowl features Notre Dame and LSU December 30th. One day before that game, Texas goes up against Arkansas in the Texas Bowl. The Aggies face off against West Virginia in the Liberty Bowl the 29th as well. Christmas Eve, Fresno State and Rice go head-to-head -head in beautiful Hawaii. And December 20th, bowl season kicks off in New Orleans between Louisiana Lafayette and Nevada. Time for us to take our first time out on the Sports Extra, but when we come back, we talk high school football. West Orange Stark head coach Cornell Thompson joins me in studio next. High school football fans, we have two local teams still alive in the playoffs, West Orange Stark and Newton. My next guest knows one of those teams very well. West Orange Stark head coach Quinnell Thompson joins him now. Coach, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. The 4A Division II state semifinal round next week. Has that sunk in yet? Well, uh, you know, we play them one at a time, you know, and uh, we know that it's within our reach at this particular time, but we got to take care of our business this week. Excitement level, I'm assuming, through the roof with this team. How do you keep the guys level-headed this week? Well, we just prepare daily for, uh, we go about our business uh, uh, every week, just like we normally do. Uh, the kids, uh, the players know what we do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we work up uh, to stage a game. You're uh, physically seeing everything you could possibly see. Uh, uh, it's a mental game now. It's mentally. Uh, uh, and when I say that, uh, you know, you play with bumps and bruises, you got to work beyond that, that mental toughness and to get physically, uh, mentally ready for the football game. The word domination comes to mind when you think of the last two games with this Western Stark team, Lamarck and LaGrange, you made, you made them both look pretty silly out there. I mean, realistically, when you look at the score, what works so well in both of those games? For well, I, I think that we're at a time uh, of the year that we're starting to, if a team peaks during the course of a year, I think that we're starting to do that at this particular time, you know, which is a good time of the year, you know, and uh, we've been fortunate enough and we did lose one young man a couple of weeks ago to an injury, but we hadn't had any major injuries and stuff other than he than uh, uh, Grant LaPointe Teat, and uh, so we're pretty healthy overall, but uh, you know, uh, we work each and every week in preparation for our opponent, just like we did day one. The offense looks stout, the defense is stingier than ever. What side of the ball, I guess, has impressed you the most the past few weeks? Well, I think our offensive line. 
you know, we've got some guys in that offensive line that have been uh, three-year starters, and those guys have really been playing well, I think, in that offensive line. But some of those same guys are playing in the defensive line also. So, But our offensive line has been a big key. Uh, we felt like when the year started that would be one of our strengths would be our offensive line, and it has shown to be that at this point. Another key a guy who's playing pretty well right now, sophomore quarterback Jack Dallas. When you think of a sophomore making a run like this deep into the playoffs, there's sometimes concerns because of the experience, but he's handled himself pretty well, hasn't he, Coach? I think Jack has handled it uh, really well. Uh, uh, he's got so many games under his belt now that he's uh, almost a junior, even though he's still a, a sophomore. And then Coach uh, uh, T.J. Ramsey has done an outstanding job, Coach Dyer and the entire offensive staff with him so in game planning every week. So uh, I think Jack has played uh, uh, very well to this point for you this week. You've not been to a state game as head coach of West Orange Stark. What would it mean to you should that happen? Well, uh, you know, it's very special, you know, uh, although I've been there as an assistant many times, but it's special to see these kids, this group of kids who uh, were freshmen when I got the job, you know, so I've seen them grow now. They're seniors and uh, they know what's in front of them. We've prepared them physically for it. You know, it's their job to get themselves ready mentally and uh, for me, it's very, it's very special to see them grow both physically and mentally, and they're doing that. All those two days, all those running up and down the bleachers paying off right now? Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> you, know, you know, what we do during the course of the week, you know, we're all blue collar. We work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We tell them we get paid on Friday. Payday on Friday. Yeah. Absolutely. And Sinton obviously wants to get paid as well, I guess you could say, this Friday. What should we know about them? Well, they're after the same prize that we're after. You know, they're a spread football team. They've been in the playoffs many, many years. This uh, uh, Tom Allen, uh, the head coach there, has been there about the same time that I, the length of time that I've been the head coach here. But that program has had a lot of uh, tradition. And uh, they've been in the playoffs a number of times. I think that they were in the fifth round, maybe the state championship here back as far as 2010. Uh, Bridge City played them at Texas A&M. So traditionally, they're, good, they're a good football program. No time and date set yet for your game. Will we know by tomorrow? Not yet, but hopefully we'll have that negotiated by noon tomorrow. Good deal. So that answers everyone's questions. We'll know tomorrow where Western Stark will be playing, what time and location. Coach, thank you so much. I'm sure a lot of Western Stark fans will be out at the game this thank, week. Thank you for having me. I'd like to say that one thing about that, too, also is uh, special thanks go out to our fans and our following because that's a big deal. The coaches and the players have noticed that. Our stands have been full the last two or three games, and we brought more people than our opponents. So a special thanks goes to our fans. Those thunder sticks have made it loud out there a lot, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Good luck Thank this week. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're going to step aside one last time, but on the other side of the break, we hear from Newton head coach W.T. Johnston about his team's upcoming state semifinal round game. The 3A Division II Newton football team is one win away from going to Jerry World. The Eagles won Friday night against Rogers and are now preparing for their state semifinal round game against undefeated Blanco. Kickoff Friday night at 7.30 inside Waller ISD Stadium. Excitement will not be a problem at practice this week for head coach W.T. Johnston. But, coach, how do you keep the guys focused on the task at hand? That's a good question. If you can tell, tell me how to keep 16, 17-year-old kids <laughs> focused, you could probably make a lot of money. Uh, no, you, we just, we're, we're in a routine, and I try to keep everything the same, whether it's the first week, you're playing Orange Field or West Orange, or you're in the 14th game. I just try to keep everything the same. I learned that from Coach Barbay. Don't make one, high, one bigger than the other. No highs and no lows, and everything will work out. That's what we try to keep. It. I'm telling you, everybody is doing really good, the coaches and the kids, and everybody knows the seriousness. You know, it's serious right now, and everybody's trying to take it that way. There's not no playing around. There's no dogs left. <laughs> Last night was an unbelievable night on the basketball court. The South Texas shootout championship game came down to the wire between 5A number one Central and 5A number four Ozan. Ozan's Jordan Hunter went off late in the game to tie it with under 30 seconds left, but Central ended up scoring on the very next possession. By the time it was done, the Jaguars won 70 to 66. The good part for us fans, we get to see these teams go head to head again, twice in district. I was in Central, one of the biggest rivalries uh, in Texas. Uh, I have been to a couple of rivalry games in other states, and they were very compared to this. It, it, it makes us real confident because we to know we beat a good team. So it, it makes us makes us feel like we're even better team. I uh, just know, know what we got to get ready for. Jordan Hunter, that's a very good good kid. He's good on the court. We just got to be ready for him next time. 
On the girls' side of the bracket, it was the Memorial Lady Titans that were the last team standing. Last night, they won the South Texas shootout for the third year in a row. They beat Lufkin 64-52 in the title game. Lady Titan guard Joyce Kennerson was named tournament MVP. After the celebration, we caught up with a very happy head coach, Kevin Henry. Stepped up and played. They came out and uh, played with a lot of energy in the first half to give us a lead, and we was able to hold it. Tournaments are, are harder to gauge because sometimes you're playing two games a uh, day, and then you have to bounce back and come back and play another game. So to be able to uh, to keep up that tempo, keep up that uh, the pace that, that we play at, it, it's it's tremendous. I, I just love it. Here are this week's SETX Sports boys basketball rankings for you in Class 6A through 4A. Central is number one, and guess who's right behind? Ozan. Sheldon C.E. King is third, followed by Umble and North Shore. In 3A through private schools, Big Sandy is at the top. Kuntz sits in second. Nacogdoches Central Heights is third. Buna and Kelly, fourth and fifth, respectively. And finally tonight, your best fishing game forecast, peaking tomorrow at both 2.40 a.m. and 3.20 p.m. That will do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for watching the Sunday Sports Extra. For the latest sports, log on to KFDM.com. Have a great work week, everyone.